Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's not something that you've got to remember to do. It's, okay. something that, it's almost an automatic reaction. Uh, and I think that, that happens in... In, we, we, we were talking about professionalism earlier on in, in, in one of the other units mm -hmm. uh, and dual professionalism and things like that. Um, one of the things that other professionals have is a similar outlook. Um, I can remember as an engineer, uh, when you do certain jobs or certain things, you, you'll think to yourself, perhaps that wasn't the best way of doing that. Uh, there may be an easier way or a more straightforward way of doing that. And you, you're questioning... You're questioning your own skill and knowledge, if you like, most of the time. And this is just a reflection, haha, <laughs> no pun intended. This is a reflection of that, in that you do that reflective exercise as an automatic thing. It's just a matter of documenting it and putting it together to meet what the actual, um, the, the actual assess assessment criteria of this unit are asking you to do. No, exactly. Absolutely. Because we're on early tonight, I haven't opened up the VLE, but I'll do that now. Because I had a little bit of a look at it, and it's the first one that has actually really made some sense. Maybe yeah. you'll get used to it as well, but it was like, oh, I sort of understand what I need to be doing now. So. <laughs> I, do, you know the, um, do you know the PDF for the um, LO4? Yeah. The one that you've got. I looked at it, but it was it had stuff about copyright um, things on it, which didn't make much sense to me. So I'm not sure if I was looking at the right place. Uh, some, of the, some, of the, some of these cover more than one unit. That's why it's in there. Oh, is that? Uh, okay. One of, one of the things on, on one of the parts on the other units, there's quite a quite a few things overlap on, on units one, two, and three. Right. Four is very slightly different, but uh, but those three. Unit three is, as you found out, almost exactly academic. Yes. It's, it's looking at rationally at the, the people involved and what they've had to say, where mm -hmm. that fits in with modern teaching methods and how you actually go about doing the job itself. Mm -hmm. So that, that is sort of a, an abstract sort of thing. The rest of the units are fairly practical. As we'll go into those. I'll have a quick look at unit one as we, after, after we finish okay. this mm -hmm. to, to give you some idea of that. So just let me, well, I'm not logged on, hang on. You're, not, you're not having no trouble getting into the VLE, that's okay. Oh, no, it's fine getting into that, yes. Yeah. I'm navigating my way through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because this is actually the, the background of everything you do. Yes. I had a girl in this afternoon who wants to do the Level 3 award in education. She's, she's mm -hmm. just getting into teaching. And I was right. going through, through some of the stuff with her. And I've forgotten some of the stuff I've put on, actually, at Level 3. <laughs> I <I'll have> this <laughs> afternoon. Yes, because I've seen in the places that you start from the Level 3, then you're going into the 4 and into the 5. Which is, I was very happy that I got straight into the 5. Cause, uh, well, it, it, you're it was... in a situation where you're doing some teaching. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole point of the five. It's, it's, to, it's to bring your knowledge out of the actual practical work that you're doing and put the two together to form this qualification. Because exactly. as I think I mentioned right at the start on this, that although it's, it's, level, it's, it's, it's been put at level five, mm -hmm. because I do work in other areas at higher levels than five, I would yes. say this is a very high level five, I'll put it that way. Okay. Um, it's, it's, there's a lot in it. It's a big qualification. There are nine mm. units, uh, and it's 120 credits, you know, per, towards a unit. Is, is that is that quite a lot? 120? Because it's been a while since I've been back in education, so I, yeah. I'm a bit yeah. Okay. Both qualifications are 60 and 75 credits. This one's right. 120. Yeah. Okay. You actually, I think, on the on the units I've chosen, we can look at that again afterwards as we go through there. If you look at the specification and look at the units that I've chosen, which are general units that most people will fall into, um, mm -hmm. if there's anything else on there that you think, oh, hang on, I'd, I'd sooner do that unit there, provided mm -hmm. it's the same credit value, then, um, yeah, you, we, we can swap that and do that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because even without the resources, I'll, I'll put some information into there that will allow, you know, allow us to go through that process. Okay, yeah. thank you. So... Um, Back to unit, come on, unit three. 
Yeah, we've got the two documents that will pull up each time because these are most useful when I'm teaching, yeah. <laughs> I actually do have them open every single time I'm working as well. Yeah. So I'm always uh, recapping against them, which is, is nice to have. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's, it, the, 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 these two documents I put in because they're, they're the best for me to teach with because they mm. give you the ideas, they give you the, the support that, that, that is there really on, on the VLE. Exactly. The other parts are great for you to do, but I mean, there's not much point in me going, taking you through a PowerPoint presentation. You can perfectly look at that yourself. Exactly. Yeah. At level C, perhaps you need to do that, yeah, but at, at, mm -hmm. at, at this level, yeah. So that's the one. We'll see that out of the way for a minute and we'll pull up the uh, amplification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we go. That's the first one, and the other one will pop up now. Yes, good. And I'm going to go right through to L5. Here we are. Yeah, four two, four two five. So the theory, principles, and models. Um, for example, it's part of Cold's learning cycle. Honey and Mumford's learning cycles, churn, reflection, inaction, stroke, reflection, on action. Um, plan, do, review, Greenway gives. It's actually similar to, to Cold's learning cycle, that. Mm -hmm. um, the description and reflection, influencing factors, alternative strategies for learning. That's where you get um, maybe people that are involved in a specific area, say special needs, uh, mm -hmm. where they've got to modify a lot of the processes that you do in teaching uh, mm -hmm. if there's no communication they've got to develop mm -hmm. a communication system that can be through symbols uh, similar thing to what you use as traffic lights but they, they play them onto the ceiling uh, mm -hmm. in colored light uh, and surprisingly it, it's a method of communication they have with some learners yeah um, I've learned some things while I've been delivering this course from, 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 you know, students been in a particular area, yeah. Um, yeah. Murphy's new situation: awareness of thoughts, and this is this is what I was trying to explain before. The awareness mm -hmm. of thoughts. It's something you you do, and you're aware of those thoughts. Sometimes mm -hmm. you don't do anything about them. What this is saying is, yes, we have those thoughts. We need to control those thoughts into action. Action, and the only yeah. way to do that is to record it so that you know what you've what your thoughts have been and how you can improve what you've done or or something that you need to change uh for particular students that you can you can go through that reflective process and bring it to the fore and say right okay i'm going to plan that and do that next time one of the reasons i'm delivering unit three first now is because i've gone through that process myself and I can see that if the advantages of actually running it that way, um, at the end of the day, if I run one, two, three, it'll still work. Exactly. But I think this will work better doing it this way, and this is because why. I, I, because as you were saying, that unit one and two is cross-referenced into this, so it's nice yeah. not to be writing double uh, things on that here. Yeah, I'll show you those when we get through to that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then evaluating the relevance and use of knowledge and identifying the learning and any new experiences. Mm -hmm. Trip critical incident approach and root fields critical lenses. That's also worth looking at. Root fields critical lenses. You can have a look those up and have a look at those. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, future presentation and individual analysis of the different models of reflection is mm -hmm. what you need to do. Like you've done with the earlier ones. Yes. Keep the 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 analysis bit separate from how you're going to use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we move on to 5.2. I've, I've already had a look at um, the Kolb's learning style, and I remember that I'd done the Honey and Mumford. I've got notes from that previously. Ah, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> Which, new on the song. Really good. Yeah, and then Mega, I... Um, Make a different name now and again. Exactly. Yeah. And like I look at some incidents as well. <laughs> Which was like searching for a needle in a haystack, but I found some paperwork on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, just explain ways in which those theories and models of reflection and evaluation can be applied to reviewing your own practice. Yes. It may be that there is 
I've had this a couple of times where um, learners have said to me, whoa, we could never use that because mm -hmm. I've said, that, there's your answer. There's your, there's your bit you need to put in. It's not just how you can, how you can um, adapt or, or ways in which they can be uh, applied. It may mm -hmm. be that they can't be applied for specific reasons. So right. in circumstances like that, you say why, and say which ones you use instead. Yeah. Right, okay. So, um, like I said, there are no actual wrong answers here. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a purely personal thing about how you do that and what you do about it and how you record it. So, again, it, it, it looks like reflecting your own practice, scaffolding questioning, analysing personal experiences. Mm -hmm. There is a SWOT analysis for you to do on the, if you look on the VLE, on mm -hmm. the materials, there is a SWOT analysis you can pull on there and do one okay. yourself. Yeah. So your, your, your threats, weaknesses and, and so forth and what you can do about it, yeah? Okay. Uh, evaluating uh, sort of formal course elevation, actual research, using of critical thinking, mm -hmm. questioning choices, problem solving, identifying and coping strategies. Mm -hmm. And this is where a lot of special needs is. They, they use, um, uh, have to use a lot of the time adapting and improving what they do in other areas to suit mm -hmm. a particular set of learners or sometimes an individual learner, yeah? Um, so it's looking at those coping strategies again as well. Mm -hmm. But like I say, with every situation you will be in teaching, you're never on your own. True. So there's always the point if you've got an issue and you, you, you sort of in two minds about it, you can always go and talk to somebody else and say, look, I've got an mm -hmm. issue here. I, I'm, you know, what, from experience, what's the best way to do this or the best way to do that? And people mm -hmm. generally, I have found, are only too pleased to help. One of the um, alternative reproaches to re reflection is recording through audio or video. Um, but sometimes that is, <laughs> it can be a bit brutal. Um, mm -hmm. If you if you um, if you use it in a, as an example of something, um, I remember uh, many years ago now when I was doing my teacher training, mm -hmm. we had to present, we had to de develop our own resources and put in a twenty minute, a one hour, and a two hour lecture. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things they used to do was video what we'd done, yeah, mm -hmm. and afterwards they would play things back and points to, you know, look at this and look at that. And as a bit of fun on one of mine, apparently, I didn't realise it at the time. I mean, I'd only just started then. Mm -hmm. uh, one, of, one of my mannerisms when um, delivering a, a, in front of a, a, a group was that I would step forward with one foot and then step back mm -hmm. again. And then use my hands a lot, but also step forward with the other foot and then step back again. Mm -hmm. And my pleasant teacher played it fast, so it looked like I was doing the okey cokey. <laughs> but it was, a, it was it was a good lesson in um, uh, objectivity from a point of view of accentuating that you have to be careful in how you actually present yourself when you're delivering a particular piece of training because it's different a distance like this because you can only see my head. But uh, but I can I can assure you that the bit underneath, the hands and so forth, they're moving about oh, yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah. um, there was, there was a, uh, an old joke used to be that um, if, you, if you took an Italian's arms away, it'd be dumb. Um, mm. But that applies to a lot of people as well, me included. <laughs> and it, 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 it's that sort of thing that, that makes a difference between um, imparting that information so that it's understood properly and mm -hmm. interfering with that. Yeah. I'm not saying that that particular mannerism would, but uh, some mannerisms could do that. Um, you can appear um, sort of a bit overbearing sometimes if, you, yeah. if you're not really careful how you actually get up, impart that information. The, one of the things um, some people will do when they want to get information over very clear, they'll raise the voice. Yeah. The level of the voice will raise uh, and they will lean forward actually as, as they, they 
give that information. Now that is a, a really serious thing that you've got to look at because right. anybody with a, with a sort of um, I won't say nervous disposition, but but mm -hmm. who likes their own space, if you like, could feel very threatened by something like that. Yeah, it could be quite off-putting. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. it could be. Yeah, yeah. And it sometimes it can be an approach where the tutor delivers the material. Mm -hmm. That's just about all. Yeah. And so they're not getting engaged, so it's just constant talking. The learner's not what engaged doing. at all. Mm. They're just li listening to somebody droning on, mm. uh, and they don't break it up with with you know anything that's a bit amusing or something like that. Yeah. Uh, if you watch really good lecturers at uni, mm -hmm. there are a few of them about to be honest. I will say, um, but the ones that are good are now on television. Right. Yeah? And the mm -hmm. reason they're on television because they know how to present information. Okay. They know how to change the voice. They know how to look. They, they know how to, they, they know how to bring humour into it. They do that even though it's a particularly serious subject or, or perhaps a dry subject. Um, right. I can think of when I was young, I used to watch a guy called Paul Sagan. I don't know whether you know him. He's an astrophysicist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is a dry subject if you're not interested in astrophysics. Yeah? Exactly. <laughs> I could listen to him all day, yeah, because he was engaging. The way he, his yeah. enthusiasm came through all the time, yeah, and that's something that, as a teacher, I've always tried to to bring into it, to show my enthusiasm for what I do, and to sort of impart that into somebody else. So yeah. this is this is all part of reflective practice on what you do, yeah, yeah? and how you actually do that. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So that's like alternative approaches, uh, audio, video, um, using video and web two you now, technologies, so okay. things like that, blogs, okay. all these things that have come in are vlogs they've got now, haven't they? Or video, video yes. blogs, <laughs> video, um, blogs yeah. video clubs approach and, and collaborative approaches using mm -hmm. self video for your mm -hmm. own teaching. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, mm -hmm. That's happened. More and more technology stretches. Um, more more things will change in in this area. So that really is the end of um, Unit 3. Okay. Um, so that leaves you just one learning objective to complete and mm -hmm. the unit is finished, which is a um, bit of a record for Unit 3, actually. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> because it, it is a particularly, as you've said yourself, to get your head around some of it is a little bit confusing sometimes. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think just sit there all Sunday. I sat in front of the laptop for an hour and a half thinking, what am I doing? So I just I started it and then I just kept on tweaking it as I, as I thought I'd finish and then it turned out fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, this is it. It, 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 it. You look at what you've done and you think, I, I work purely to the assessment criteria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, look at the assessment criteria, look at what you've done and go, mm -hmm. I'll read through it and go, yes. And I'll, I'll put, that's why your formative assessment will just say good or okay or whatever. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't mean to say it is only okay or it only is good. It might yeah. be extremely good. It might be excellent. But I don't write that on there. I'll put it at, actually in the assessment at the top. Okay. <laughs> so that goes into the other sheet on, when yeah. I put my assessment in. Um, so the um, the work that we've done, as I said, up to now is fine. Uh, I think if we go going along as we have, you'll do quite okay. Mm-hmm. So with that, I will move on to another unit, if you don't mind, now, just to give okay. you an idea. Yeah? That's okay. fine, yes. So we'll close him down. And we'll close him down. And we'll go back to unit one, which we will do next. And I'm going to bring the same two. If I can remember where I put them, there's the amplification. Save, open. Yeah, the uh, reflective teacher handout that it was mentioning, that's the one from unit one, isn't it? The the little PDF. Yeah, because there is an overlap there. This is, this is yeah. the, I'm going to come to that in a minute when I'm going to show you this now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's just put that out of the way for now and we'll go to, we'll find where I put it. So I've had it out and moved it in. Uh, I put it. 
here we are. No, I've done the amplification, that's not the one. Here we are, there it is. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Mm -hmm. So you need one is looking at analysing your own role and responsibilities in education and training. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or LO one, I should say, is mm -hmm. analyse your own role and responsibilities in education and training. Mm -hmm. My suggestion is there that you use your current job or description to analyse your role and what the responsibilities are within that role. Yeah. So even if I'm not working as a teacher at the moment because I'm doing a teaching assistant, should I just... Describe my teaching assistant or describe exactly, yeah, exactly yeah, okay. your role as it is now, yeah. Mm -hmm, okay. Your, your current job description and analyse your role and responsibilities, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it says it doesn't say teaching role, it just yeah. says analyse your role mm -hmm. and responsibilities in education and training. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I I apply the 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 assessment criteria as words, yeah. Yes. That's why mm -hmm. the the. Uh, command verbs here, analyse, summarise, analyse, describe, are most important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So again, summarise key aspects of legislation, regulatory requirements and codes of practice relating to your own role and responsibilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Read and respond to the section in regard to these in the, okay. one of the e-books on there. There's information on that, legal, the legal bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. Analyze the relationships and boundaries between the teaching role and other professional roles in the establishment where you are. So that uh, an organogram, if you know what one of those is. Uh, oh. A chart, um, a hierarchy chart. Yeah, yeah, basically it is a chart. Who does what? So that's what yeah. I put on there. An organogram with explanation and analysis of who is who and what mm -hmm. they do, basically. So would I make the chart and then write put a, a couple of paragraphs underneath? You may find that you already there, there already is one in existence where you are. Yeah. Yeah, I should ask for you know any information that can be given to you. I actually have one that I've I've previously made from a TA. Three, ah, right, okay, yeah. Which uh, but, I think might cover this as well. Yeah. Well, if you're, you're comfortable with it, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But what I tend to find is that if you if you are have got some form of post inside an establishment, they will mm -hmm. have tons of stuff. That you can copy. Okay. Uh, and one of the people to look at is the the person in charge of quality. Yeah? Okay. They usually have all the documents and, and bits and pieces that you'll ever need. Um, and there's no point in making new wheels if you've already got them. Already got them. Yeah. Again, whatever you're more comfortable with, that's fine with me. I'm going to go ask for the quality person tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Point of them. Now I'm just going to whip down to the end here. Mm -hmm. This is quite a long one, isn't it? It's a big unit, this. Yeah. Eight. Wow. Review the effectiveness of your own practice in planning, delivering, and assessing inclusive teaching and learning in your own, what's his name, yeah? Mm -hmm. And identify areas for improvement. That will be part of your reflection that mm -hmm. you've done in Unit 3. Okay. So evidence from that reflection in Unit 3, ideas from reflection of learning outcome 7 in, in Unit 3 can be cross-referenced across to LO7. In, uh, okay. Yeah, so there's, there's your, your hint on there. <laughs> but with all of those, um, mm -hmm. I always say, read what you've written, mm -hmm. read what this is asking you to do, it yeah. may be that you can use that evidence and then it may need a little bit added to it to actually Assessment mm -hmm. criteria. Yeah, okay. so that was that was just an example I'm giving you from now. We, yeah. We'll whip back to where we were. Um, oops, LO2 is looking at meeting learners' needs. Mm -hmm. um, explain why it's important to identify those. Look at the role of youth in the initial, uh, in the initial and diagnostic assessment in agreeing personal leaving goals. So now you're gonna you're gonna bump into some documentation now. You're mm -hmm. gonna look at Initial assessment documentation for, for the yeah. learners you've got. It may be that you've not actually done that initial assessment, or it may be you have. It doesn't matter. As long mm -hmm. as you've got copies of that, uh, you can you can use those copies of, as your evidence, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then explain just a short explanation then of how that works, yeah, and what it's for. 
any diagnostic work that's done, you can have that as well. Um, and of course, the, the, the documentation. Most schools now do provide a training plan, an, an individual learning plan for so either an ITP or an ILP, it doesn't really matter which. Um, and again, if they've got a copy of that, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, and any documentation that I might get physically, like yeah. I know IOPs will give it as a physical paper form. How would yeah. I get that? Do I just photograph it and or scan it? And or? right, what, what you do is the easiest way to do this is to, um, well, there's two ways. Of, <laughs> yeah, the, the easiest way of doing this is take out the learner's name first. Yes. But you, you can't leave the learner's name in for you know data protection purposes, uh -huh. and replace it with A and B. Yeah, okay. if you only need two, you need copies of two. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the copies I've suggested in there somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. Let's have a quick look on here. Um, analyze, analyze, an analysis using copies of uh, initial assessment and diagnostic for at least two learners are required mm -hmm. for the explanation of the process uh, from admission leading up to teaching. Okay. Copies of two learners' ILPs ostensibly. Uh, while having a learning issue. Now, yeah. if you've not got one, it doesn't matter. Okay. What you can do is pretend one has one, because okay. in a later bit further down, it will ask you how you would adapt a learning plan, a lesson plan, I should say, for yeah. that particular learner. So okay. if it's got dyslexia, or it's got a sight problems, or it's got a hearing mm -hmm. problem, you decide for yourself. Okay. Uh, if, if, if you've not got one. If there is one, yeah, use that by all means. Uh, okay. Because we're not naming them, we're just using the, the, that as an example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and wherever you can, you, you've got um, evidence that you can put forward. Because now it says quite clearly, it doesn't say talk about recording learners' individual goals. It says mm -hmm. record learners' individual goals. Right. In other words, show me an ILP. Okay. Yeah. And then you've got your ILP for two learners, mm -hmm. and you, you can do a copy of that, and then just talk talk you through them. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm only I'm giving you an outline tonight. I'm not going to. Yeah. We're not. I'm going to give you some uh, um, complete the work on Unit Three first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. But again, this is just giving you an outline for this for tonight. So if you want, you've completed that. If you wanted to make a start on this, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So. Uh, Again, design teaching and learning plans which result, respond to the individual goals and needs of learners and curriculum requirements. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is your um, lesson planning. Oh, sorry, I missed that one out. Devise a scheme of work in accordance with internal and external requirements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, again, if you've got a scheme of work, you mm -hmm. don't have to necessarily develop it yourself. Okay. But if you are working to it, just explain how it works. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so th the same applies with the, the next bit, which is the training plan. Yeah. yeah. And that, again, explain how your own planning meets the individual needs of learners. So, yeah, if you've got a learner with an issue, you can explain how you actually deal with that learner. Yeah. yeah. Because the next bit, Explain how teaching and learning plans can be adapted to meet the individual needs of learners. So again, okay. you've already identified your learner with an issue. You can mm -hmm. explain how you get around that at this point. It just follows into each other quite exactly. easily. One it? bit rolls into the next mm -hmm. on this unit all yeah. the way through. Yeah, I'm glad you picked that up. Not everybody <laughs> picks that up. That is, that is good. Thank you. And it also, it, it doesn't seem to be too much of a workload as long as I've got the correct paperwork to hand already, exactly. isn't it? it? Yeah. As I said to you, this is not an academic qualification. This mm -hmm. is partly practical. And right. showing evidence of what you know and what you can do. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And that's why I've said that it's perhaps stronger than a level five, but because right. of the way it's got to be be shown and, and the evidence that you produce. Now, the other bit I wanted to ask on there was do mm -hmm. your do you have any teaching observations? Are, um, you, obs are you observed I, at all? I have been observed uh, for my, I've had four observations in total for my right. teaching assistant ones and I've still got the paperwork 
Um, well, in, I've, I've got lots of paperwork for yeah. them because one file went. I lent, I was very silly, I lent it to someone, which you never should do. <laughs> it's gone missing now. So well, uh, I've got for my level three ones. Yeah. I usually look at doing about six on here. So if you've got some already, yeah, mm -hmm. I've, got, I've got one in a specific format, yeah. Okay. That you can get somebody to fill in at, at, at school. Okay. Mine are very simple and straightforward. This is why I like them. They're from the NCFE awarding body as well. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, one of the biggest thing is the observer ends up writing reams and reams of stuff and it, it, it gets ignored a lot of it yes actually says did this happen yes or no and a quick no okay. yeah and that is it's as simple as that really and mm -hmm. it is excellent evidence and it's good okay. feedback for, it's good feedback for yourself as well no that's true so again, I'm, I'm, I'm starting my um um voluntary work on monday Everything's yeah. all been put into place. Um, do I just go in and do what I normally did as a teaching assistant, um, or do I ask to do X? Because I know that I, I used to take groups of children and so on um, with my own role as it was. Or do I ask to be given a bit more responsibility? What? Because I don't want to talk to no, 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 Not necessarily, no. Uh, what I find is most teachers' assistants at some point will get a small group to deal with. Yes. That the teacher is put out, they may be dropping behind a bit, or mm -hmm. you know they may need some extra support, and sometimes you'll get that small group, and that is the extra responsibility because. Right, okay. But in one way, you could look at it as saying the teacher is saying, "I've got a big class, I can't cope with that. I need mm -hmm. somebody to do that." Yeah. Right. And that's then your responsibility to bring okay. those, that group up to there. So yeah, no, no, it's nothing fine. Your role's fine as it is. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Um, yeah, and it then goes on to look at in, in four. Um, oh, this, sorry, I didn't finish three. Um, Meets the needs of learning, explain which teaching and learning plans can be adapted. Identify opportunities for how learners can give feedback to you, yeah? Mm -hmm. To inform inclusive practice, yeah? So yes. anything that you do with learners, how old are your groups, by the way? Um, they're in year three, so they're going to be um, so eight, no, ah, nine right. to ten, cool. yes. That's great, because it's what nine. you mm -hmm. find is that you can, you can ask simple questions. Yes. Um, you, that is the feedback you're going to get. If you ask the right questions, you'll get the right answers. Yes. Um, <laughs> and that will give you the feedback you're looking for. Um, okay. Yeah, to achieve that. So, yeah, any copies of that, you've got a docu if you document any of it, yeah, mm -hmm. or if you could document any of it, yeah, yeah, by taking some notes when you were doing that, mm -hmm. and then just explain what they are and why you've done it, yeah. Okay. The next bit is on behaviour. It's look at how you promote appropriate behaviour and respect for others, explain mm -hmm. ways of promoting equality and value in diversity, and establishing a safe and inclusive learning environment. So, yeah. read and respond, there's stuff in there, read and respond, new work school, college equality and diversity policy and explain how it is implemented. Yeah. I've got a very good experience with LO4. <laughs> I think that's yeah. probably one of my easiest little sections to do for this because I've yeah. done quite a bit of stuff. But, it, but again, with all these, equality person is the person to monitor yeah. if you need some documentation for that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, five is looking at the effectiveness of teaching and learning in your own area of specialism in relation mm -hmm. to meeting the individual needs. An analysis of what you do in your teaching approach and why it's effective, yeah? Mm -hmm. Include school, college, work communication practice. Example, use email meetings, oral, you know, meetings or whatever you do to, to mm -hmm. pass information around within the organisation. Yeah? Okay. Analyze the benefits and limitations of the quality communications method. Uh, and the media used in your own area of specialism. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is like I said. This this document is between you, me, and the person who will like you eventually. Um, okay. You, it, I've had instances where um, some of my learners have been very not very pleased with some of the systems they, they've got within their organisation, mm -hmm. and have come up with what they should really need to be doing, and that's right. been excellent work. I mean, it doesn't matter. Nobody else is going to see it. So <laughs> if, if, if you um, 
Um, a couple of them sort of vented their spleen a little bit. But, um, <laughs> it felt very frustrated, yeah, but the way things were. So you can be a bit vocal for men who are yeah, yeah, this, yeah. this is you about you and what you do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so again, it comes in, analyze the effectiveness of resources available and used in your own area. Yeah, mm -hmm. what are the resources like? I've had students say, brilliant, we, we, we just ask for it and we get it. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, every resource we need, we just say so and it's there. Mm -hmm. Others, resources, what resources? I spend half the night doing this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. There, there's a, a vast difference in, in, in you know, the reaction from, from people on this, on this um, learning mm -hmm. object. Yeah. Five is quite a big one. There are seven yes. assessment criteria on, on five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's um, use inclusive learning uh, approaches and resources, including technologies to meet the individual needs of learners. Okay. So mm -hmm. using any technology that you use, it can be anything from, I don't know, um, some, some, I know some people use YouTube, uh, some teachers use YouTube with the students mm -hmm. for certain things, and there are all sorts of things into which technology comes into now. Yes. It could be a simple uh, PowerPoint presentation, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So demonstrate ways to promote equality and diversity, adapt mm -hmm. teaching and learning approaches and resources, including technologies to meet individual needs of learners. So that's your learner with an issue again. Yes keeps coming back all the time, refer back to that all the time, you've mm. got your piece of evidence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you can write on for that one, refer mm. to um, Appendix 3 or whatever it was, yeah. uh, and then just say a little bit about it and why it meets this this, uh, this criteria here. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, communicate with learners and learning professionals to meet individual needs. This is where copies of any feedback given to learners or assessment records or IV or feedback to the assessors, minutes of any meetings you've had, yeah, or any mm -hmm. standardization work that's done uh, within, you know, through teachers in the delivery of similar courses, if you know what I mean. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, one I, I do with the assessors on, um, say I get a group in the, of assessors that do the assessment on the business course, mm -hmm. I will select a couple of learning objectives of a learner that's been assessed, mm -hmm. and I'll give everybody a copy and, and of the piece of work that's been assessed and say, right, do me an assessment on that. What's, what's your verdict on that? Um, mm -hmm. and then when they've all, you know, put the verdict together, uh, some will say, well, I've passed them. Others will say, well, I've not passed them because. And mm -hmm. then we get a discussion together as to to to, to um, uh, sort of validate your your, your um, decision. Yes. So it's mm -hmm. good because it looks at the different practice and the way people do do things differently and which one is right. I mean, I can look, because of my experience, I'll say, well, neither of you are wrong in something, mm -hmm. in, in, but you need to look again at the specific criteria. Is it actually doing that or isn't it? Yes. You've said that it is. You've said that it isn't. Why have you said it's not? And mm -hmm. it may be something very minor. And I said, well, That'll come within reasonable adjustment, surely. And they go, oh yeah, I haven't thought about it like that. And, and yeah, you know, so it's it's a it's not a sort of a blame session. It's it's a a, a learning curve session, really. Mm. But it is quite complex, isn't it? About had the assessment in itself. About assessment how itself it's, yeah. is mm. easy if you look at it initially as black and white. Right. Yeah, and it met it or not. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's met it, but, or no, it hasn't met it because. Yeah? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it, there may be, yes, it's not a problem, that's straight through. Um, and that's why you'll see me on my, my reviews on the side of here. It'll just say, good, good, good. Okay, mm -hmm. fine, yeah. Uh, and then the assessment will be on here. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's that's the way I always look at it, um, black and white. And then you look at say, well, yeah, um, I would have said no, but reading on a little bit, if you look at what's in the second part, mm -hmm. maybe that should be there, but it's actually covered and the understanding's there. Yeah? Okay. The, the bottom line with anything for assessor is can I see the understanding? Can I that that's what when you when you drop right. back and if you've got an issue, 
Mm-hmm. Can I see the understanding there? That right. can be difficult sometimes if you've got students whose English is not their first language. Okay. Um, it may be that you've got to read what they've written three or four times and then go, ah, yeah, I, I see what I see what they mean. Yeah. But I know what they mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and the assessment process is 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 not subjective. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's it's objective and it has right. to be. And that's the whole point of my main role, which is, is, is the internal quality assurer, is mm-hmm. to sample um, right. students' work from different assessors and, and say, do an assessment report, and say, yes, that was fine, that was okay, that was okay, that was okay, um, mm-hmm. no further actions, that's fine, gone. Or, okay. um, I think you need to go back to L03 and have a chat with the learner, look at 3.4 and 3.5 because mm-hmm. I don't think that that is fully meeting the AC. Have a look at that, see what you think, and come back to the uh, come back to the, the 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 learner with it, and then then okay. come back. So they get that report. That will go back to the the assessor and the learner. Mm-hmm. Uh, very occasionally, I, I've been caught out, and the learn the assessors come back to me and said, "Ah, yeah, hang on, I've got that covered further down." Right. Mm-hmm. And I've got oh, I haven't seen that. <laughs> but it's a good check. Yes. Looking at a fairness of assessment across the qualification to all the learners. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that they can be confident that they're being treated fairly. But yeah. they are they are at the awarding body of it can be happy that they're meeting the standard. That's the thing. So the whole point is, it doesn't matter who's marking it, as long as you're following those certain objectives. Exactly. And it will be marked across the board that way. Yeah. yeah. See, I come from a somewhat easier background in terms of mm-hmm. uh, my, my assessment started off in MBQ, um, mm-hmm. where it is black and white. They've either achieved it or they haven't. It'll be a task. Right. Yeah. Did mm-hmm. it go well? Did it do it correctly? Did it put everything back properly? Did it work when they switched it on? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, all those sort of things. Um, right. Uh, and th- did they work safely? Did they make sure they got this? All those things are very clear. There are mm-hmm. no subjective bits like there are with academic work. There yeah. is some subjectivity to it, but you've got to try and take as much of that out as possible. Exactly. Yes. I'm already liking this because there's no theories to look at. <laughs> there's not too much searching to do. <laughs> well. Sometimes you can, you may have to refer back to some of that and have a little yeah. read at what you've mm-hmm. done on that. Yeah. But again, you use types of methods of assessment, including mm-hmm. fear and self-assessment, to mm-hmm. involve learners in assessment, meet the individual mm-hmm. needs of learners, enable them to produce assessment evidence that is valid, reliable, sufficient, authentic, mm-hmm. and current, and meet internal and external assessment requirements. Okay. Sometimes this this may be out of your area a little bit. Not all that mm-hmm. may happen. Okay. Like a, the the situation I've just explained in MBQ, most of that will apply. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, it's like, and it's it's making sure that the evidence that's that's been developed is is valid. For instance, uh, when we first started to use photographic evidence, yeah. um, I get a picture of a number of people in in a in a an area doing something, mm-hmm. and the first thing I looked at to the assessor and I said, well. Where's the learner? Who is it? Oh, it's him there. Put an arrow, learner. And it's <laughs> a photograph, yeah? I don't know. It could be Joe Bloggs from down the street for all I know. Definitely, yes. And he, he went, oh, I haven't thought about it. Because he knew them all, yeah? Mm-hmm. There's not a problem. <laughs> but again, you pass it to somebody else and say, well, who's assessing what here? What's he doing? What's been achieved by the photograph? Nothing, because he doesn't identify anybody. So, yeah, you've got to, that, that's the way you've got to validate what's been actually put in front of you mm-hmm. uh, and look at those objectively. <laughs> so, using questions and feedback to contribute to the assessment process, this is something mm-hmm. you will do, yeah? Okay. Uh, so, you'll, you'll be um, questioning your learners, yeah? And mm-hmm getting that feedback from them to you and also giving them feedback uh, as part of that assessment process because when you've got a a, a, um, a separate group like that to deal with you'll be mm-hmm. achieve trying you'll be intending to achieve something 
And obviously, you'll have to impart that in material. You'll make an assessment of whether that's happening or whether it isn't, or you need a further intervention, yeah? Mm -hmm. Communicate assessment information to other professionals with an interest in the learner. Mm -hmm. That is mainly um, when assessments are done, the quality assurance person uh, will be making sure that that is working across the board, yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you'll be using that, they'll be taking that information that you've got to analyse it, yeah, to see that it's actually working and what you're intending to do is actually happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. The it's slightly different, but you'll be able to bring evidence for this in the analyse mm -hmm. way, which minimum core can be demonstrated in planning, delivering and assessing the teaching that you're doing, yeah? Yeah. And again, um, you can look at the evidence for task seven to show how they helped in planning and um what does that say? Deleting. We need to change that. You're deleting the word. <laughs> Delivering. <laughs> <laughs> and eight, of course, I said you can refer back to those. And mm -hmm. I've just put a bit of a note on the bottom here that all these are suggestions to help you to use the naturally occurring evidence you produce in day-to-day -day work as a teacher. Mm -hmm. Some of you might not cover all the practices, for instance, initial assessment, and that can be done by someone else in the school. In this case, you can get copies for your two learners that are in your class, and the mm -hmm. same applies to other processes that you have not personally done, but you must give full details about that process works. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that is literally unit one. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, but like I said, uh, don't go too far into this. Let's mm -hmm. get you to be boxed off first, yeah. and then have a look at. Uh, you can have a look at unit. Uh, uh, so, sorry, learn objective one. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and once we get going, and um, you produce some documents, and I've said, yeah, that's fine. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. That needs to fit in there. You'll you'll see where we're going with it, and then you'll yeah. obviously you'll pick it up. Okay, no, that's fantastic. Thank you. Well, that's enough talking from me tonight. I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, <laughs> so put some enlightenment to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'll look forward to receiving your LO5. Um, thank you. <laughs> and if, have you got any specific questions for me tonight? Do you know what I did have? My mind has gone blank now. <laughs> well, take a minute, we're not in a hurry. <laughs> Take a minute. Yeah. We're not, what, what, what are t yeah, one of the things that works actually through this is mm -hmm. when you've got some thoughts, drop them, jot them down, write them down. Yeah. I should have, yeah, that would have been yeah. the best thing to do. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes it might be when you're in the middle of a piece of work mm -hmm. and you don't really want to stop and you think, oh, right, I'm, I'm uh, text me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Text me and say, I'm up to L03 on such and such a thing. My head's gone blank. I don't know what to do. Blah, blah, mm. blah. And I'll then suggest something we should look on here. Or I, I might think, well, actually, there's not a lot on there on that. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll give, you, I'll, you know, I'll give you some advice on how to proceed. Okay. Yeah. Um, there was, yeah, I just remember what I was going to ask. It was um, that the school, that I, even though I'm there on a voluntary basis, they won't have any problems giving me access to ILPs or assessments or anything, will they? So Provided that the learners' names are taken out yes, and that not, they are yeah. non-identified, uh, I've not met anybody that's objected to that up to okay. now. It's clear what it's for and what it's doing, and mm. the only place that it's going is between you, me, and my IQA. Yes. yes. And, and that is basically it. That's it. Okay. Now that's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, get on to the work now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Anyway, thanks for coming tonight, and I'll speak Thank to you next week. And in the meantime, if you've got any questions, like I say, either mail me or text me. Will do. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank for that. I'll speak next Bye. week. Bye now, Asha. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.